Hello, everybody. Okay. All right, what are we waiting on now? Um, Your Honor, if I may. Uh, I'm going to speak with the prosecutor, but uh, Mr. Bell's and I had quite a breakdown in our ah. relationship. And I just spoke with my supervisor, uh, and I'm going to speak with the prosecutor, but I do anticipate making a motion. Okay. Appearances, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I'm Anthony as I request your permission under MCR 8.120 to conduct this hearing under the supervision of Attorney Mohammed Mohammed. Granted. Neighborhood Defender Service by Kate DeMott Grady, 83667, on behalf of Mr. Wayne Bales, who's present with us here in the courtroom. Mr. Bales, please state your name. Wayne Bales. Thank you. Joy Council. Your Honor, um, at this point, I am moving to withdraw. There has been a breakdown in the attorney client relationship. Council. Your Honor, the people are ready to proceed. We have civilian witnesses. We have a police officer, no civilian witnesses. Are you planning on hiring your attorney, sir? Um, I was seeing if it was possible to be appointed another. Uh, we appoint, you don't get to pick. We appointed. Okay, um, I'll have to then, sir. I was, I'll have to then, sir. Have to hire another attorney. I'll have to, um, being that uh, she doesn't wish to represent me. I don't think she doesn't want to represent you. I think that. You probably aren't listening to her advice. That's what my guess is. Um, Usually, when there's a breakdown of communication between the attorney right. and the client, it's because the client's not listening to the attorney. I understand, sir. Um, but I was on the innocent, and she didn't want to stand by the innocent aspect of it. So, okay. Um, I have to. All right. Well, first of all, innocent, and this is going to sound bad, but it's true. Innocent is not a word that we use in a court of law. It's guilty or not guilty. I'm not guilty, sir. I know that, or you'd be already downtown somewhere. Right. Okay. Right. So my understanding is there's a preliminary exam scheduled for today. Yes, sir. Okay. My understanding is she's prepared to do the, or was when she got here, prepared to do the preliminary exam. That's the next stage in the proceedings when you're pursuing you're not guilty. Yes, sir. Follow me? Yes, sir. The question is whether or not you waive the exam and just go downtown and fight the case, or if you go through the exam because whatever reason your attorney might choose to do that. Okay. So the question for you is, and, and that's why I said what I said. My experience has been usually when there's a breakdown in the relationship to the point where the attorney is saying, I can't represent this person anymore. It's because you're not accepting her advice. I'm, I'm just pleading not guilty, sir. That's all. Okay. And she's told you, you can't plead not guilty. And she said it was against her advice. And um, I should probably hire another attorney. Was there an offer that the, the prosecutor made to you? Yes, sir. I okay. Do, and do. has she presented that offer to you? Yes, sir. And has she told you that she thought that was a good offer? Well, that's going against. Yes or no? Yes or no? Did was, she tell you she thought it was a good offer? Yes, she did. Sir. Okay. And did she say, if you don't take this offer, then I can't help you? Pretty much, sir. Yes, sir. That's what she said. Yes, sir. Okay. Said that, Would you like to weigh in at this point, counsel? Your Honor, I, I don't really want to get into a back and forth of everything, but I think the court is maybe seeing partly what's going on. Right. Obviously, I've advised that it's my duty to fight and follow my, my client's wishes, no matter right. whether I think it's the correct choice or not. So I would uh, counter that representation as well. Am I correct in assuming you're prepared to hold a preliminary exam? Of course, Your Honor. Yes. Do you want an exam? If that's what I'm not sure how the process goes, sir. Okay, then ask I'm, questions. I'm here. Then I'm ask here. questions. Here's the way it works you've been charged with a felony. Right. Yes, Understood. Sir. Okay. There's a preliminary exam process in place that if you want, as a defendant, if you want to make the prosecutor prove their case to a certain level so they can get past a gatekeeper like me, yes, then they help, then you hold a probable cause hearing. At that hearing, the prosecutor's office has to prove two things. There was a crime committed and there's reason to believe that you had something to do with the commission. That's fairly, fairly low standard. But if both of those questions are answered by myself today, by the judge, with yes, then the case moves forward to circuit court level for further resolution. There can be a deal made, there can be a trial held, there can be motions filed, further things happen at that stage. Yes, sir. The other option is 
the defense attorney and the defendant might agree that based on the facts and the law that we're dealing with on a particular file, there's really no reason to have the exam. Let's just agree that there's reason to send it downtown. We'll go downtown and continue the fight. That's the process. Okay. Today was scheduled for that probable cause conference, a preliminary exam. Yes, sir. All right. If you want that, she's here to do it. They're ready to go. That's not saying you're guilty or not guilty. It's just saying mm -hmm. that's the next step in the process if you choose to go that route. Yes, sir. So to say, I'm not going to take an exam today because I don't want to admit my guilt. You're not admitting guilt. Um, sir, I just was saying I was not guilty. And she said that there was a, a she would rather not be my attorney. That, that there was, was a what? I didn't, I didn't ask her not. She said what? She said she'd rather not be my attorney. Okay, sir, I don't believe that. I mean, maybe there's a maybe there's a maybe there's a miscommunication somewhere. Once again, are you prepared for the exam? Yes, Your Honor, I am prepared. I he's ready, or the prosecutor's office is ready. I'm not sure who's going to hold the exam. Um, she's ready. If you want an exam, we can do it today. I'm fine with that, sir. I, I was I wasn't saying that I didn't want her as my attorney. She said she'd rather not be my attorney. Okay, then let's have an exam. Okay, yes, sir. All right, let's get a witness on the stand. Who's the first witness? We are honored before we call our first witness. Uh, we are asking a mutual order of sequestration with the exception of the officer in charge as well, Detective Long. And then we will also be admitting a copy of the lab report in um, this case that shows that the drugs were tested positive for methamphetamine under 76611B. All right. Anything from the defense on that? Uh, no objection, Your Honor, to either. Um, I'm sorry. Isn't. Are you just doing a true narc? I'm sorry. Is that a drug report? Right. But do you have the MSB drug report? No, we do not. Well, first things first, as to the sequestration. No order, objection to sequestration, Your Honor. Granted. All right. So what, what do we have for a report? I'm sorry. Okay, so they have it just have a true narc scan. Okay. Um, I would uh, object just um as to that being a preliminary analysis okay i'm yeah. not familiar with the true narc scan i don't even know what it is what is that i don't know that i've ever heard that phrase that's yeah I'm... um and then just for the record mohammed mohammed on behalf of the people judge uh true narc report is a drug um scan that the the, the oic of the case conducted a test of the drugs and the um, analysis of the drug was that the drug that was recovered in this case tested positive for methamphetamine. So it's just, it's it's similar to the MSP lab one, but it's not the same machine. It's not MSP who conducted the test. It's more like a preliminary test. Yes, and it was conducted by the OIC. Okay. All right. So it's actually, um, it, it's actually an instrument that does a, a limited, of some kind analysis of a substance? Yes, it's a drug report. Um, the one the, the one we're introducing is the true NARC scan report, which is- okay. Um, how long have we been using those, Detective? Actually, that's what MSD uses now for preliminary stuff. We purchased our own to save the How have I not heard of this before? Because they always do the other testing through MSP's lab, and that's what's actually admitted in court. So I'm a little bit, I guess I would just ask the people under what authority they're relying on this preliminary test and also to lay it Well, stop. You're taking my question. What's the authority for using this instead of an MSP report? Well, we don't have an MSP lab report. And so this is going to be used to show that, you know, by probable cause that the drugs that were recovered in this case were methamphetamine. Okay, I understand you don't have the MSP report. My question is, what's the authority for, for allowing that instead of an MSP report? Well, it comes under 76611B, it's a drug report associated with the case. I can pull up the rule and find out exactly. Pull it up, because I'm going to have to look at it. All right. That's actually what MSP does now. It's from there. Unless it goes through the trials. Is this is this the way they're trying to keep up with the backlog? I'm assuming this is a lot faster than full blown analysis. Yeah. Or you know, over 500 substances. Hmm. Okay. A louder for Heather. It's a, a device that scans over 500 different substances. And if you know how many analysis or how many substances can be an out analyzed analyzed in a day or an hour i'm assuming it's a lot more than the, the full blown it's lab it's a pretest you scan the, the, the substance you do most so you do several a day okay i mean 
to do one of those in five days in less than five minutes. Okay. All right. Mr. McGray, do you have any uh, argument why that shouldn't be good enough for a PC standard? Um, Your Honor, uh, I guess I would just. My only concern is the reliability of the testing, and there's a reason that you know most every other drug case I deal with, the MSV lab is what is used, and there's a reason that you know departments are sending stuff to a lab right. for the further testing. Right. So I guess that would be my concern: is the reliability of it. Yeah. I'll allow it for probable cause conference. Uh, somebody's got to make the first rule. Um, in, in judgment, obviously, it's it's fixable at trial. And just for the record, if it wasn't to be permitted under 766.11b, we would just introduce it through um, the officer in charge because he's the one who conducted the drug test and he could, we could lay foundation and introduce it. I'll allow it for PC. All right, thank you. All right, next question. Ready for witness? Yes, Your Honor. People call police officer Mowbray to stand. Officer, come on up. Watch your step on my ramp. Raise your right hand. Swear firm, tell the truth, the whole truth, and that's the truth. Settle in. State your name. Spell your last. Curtis Mowbray, last M O W B R A Y. Thank you. Your Honor, may be published as your mark scan report to the court. Please. May I approach? Yep. If you do, you have a copy for defense. I have a copy. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Thanks. Good afternoon, Officer Mowbray. Okay. Could you please restate your name for the record? Curtis Mowbray. Are you currently employed? Yes, I am. Where? Van Buren Township Police Department. Are you in any sort of specialized unit? Patrol unit. And for how long have you been doing this for? Seven and a half years in Van Buren Township, four years in Roswell, New Mexico. Okay, and were you? Employed in this capacity on the day of May 5th, 2024? Yes, I was. Did your duties as an officer bring you at or near the location of South I-94 Service Drive in the township of Van Buren County of Wayne? Yes. What brought you there? Um, a male subject later identified as Mr. Wayne Bales called dispatch and advised he believed someone had broken into his garage. Okay. And um, upon making this arrival, were you, were you alone or were you with any partners? I was with a uh, partner. Who was the partner? Uh, Officer McGregor. And were you in a squad car or foot patrol? Yes, squad patrol car. car. Okay. Was it fully or partially marked? Fully marked. And were you in full or modified uniform? Fully marked uniform. Okay. And upon making this location or prior to making this location, did you do any sort of check on the caller? Yes, I did. While well, en route, dispatch advised that uh, during the lean SOS Objection check. Objection here, sir. While en route to the call, I conducted a lean SOS check on my in-car computer system on Mr. Wayne Bales, and it showed that he had several outstanding warrants for his arrest out of our agency. Okay. And upon arriving to this location, um, did you make contact with Mr. Uh, Bates or Bales? Yes, I did. Okay. Do you see this uh, person in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Uh, where? Standing right behind me. Could you identify a piece of clothing they are in? Uh, Darker colored polo shirt, dark pants, okay. brown shoes. Could Noted. You, thank you. Okay, upon arrival, um, please tell us what happened. Make contact with Mr. Bales right at the front door of his garage. Uh, he stated, believe someone had attempted to break into his garage because the locking mechanism was jammed with some type of debris. Okay. I observed surveillance cameras covering several angles right outside the garage. So I asked uh, Mr. Bales, uh, if he was able to enter his garage, he said he was able to clear out the locking mechanism, make entry. He didn't observe any damage. Okay. Um, I asked if he observed okay. anybody on surveillance cameras. He said no. Okay. And you said that running the lean check, he had six warrants. Did you place the defendant under arrest? I six verbally placed him under arrest at that time because further investigation revealed that there didn't appear to be any attempt of a breaking and entering into his garage. So at that time, I advised Mr. Bales that he was under arrest for his outstanding warrants. Um, while speaking with Mr. Bales on scene the whole time, I ended up passing a black Ford Edge with two okay. front doors and that were open. The hood was open. Okay. Uh, believing and that was Mr. Bales' vehicle, I advised him I was not going to handcuff him out of respect to him. Okay. And, and he would be able to secure his vehicle. Okay. So upon seeing this vehicle, what, if anything, did you observe uh, the defendant doing? Uh, did, you, did you observe the defendant do anything? So after advising Mr. Bales that he was going to be placed under arrest and allowing him to go secure his vehicle, I was uh, I walked right directly next to Mr. Bales. 
Uh, Mr. Bales and I then walked up to the front of the vehicle. I observed Mr. Bales to immediately reach into the engine compartment in which I observed what he was reaching for. There was several items, one to be a clear glass smoking device with residue. Um, okay, and what else did you observe? So with that, through my training uh, experience, prior experience and all, I observed that to be drug paraphernalia. Right directly next to that, I observed a black film container, possibly a pill bottle, but it looked like a black film container. Couldn't see through it. So based on my observations, previous experience, I immediately grabbed Mr. Bales and then placed him under arrest for the hand, uh, in handcuffs under arrest for his warrants and then that suspected drug paraphernalia. Okay, and did you recover these items that you observed? Yes, after placing Mr. Bales in my patrol unit, I then went back to recovery glass, uh, clear glass smoking device with residue and that film container pill bottle that was directly next to it upon opening that container observed uh, two clear plastic baggies with a white crystalline substance inside through training experience I observed it to be methamphetamine a suspect methamphetamine okay and did you place these items in evidence yes i did okay so after placing the defendant in the vehicle did you transport him to the police department yes sir okay and did he make any statements while you were transporting he made him? several open voluntary statements what statements did he make may i refer to my report to get specific statements yes you may Oops, apologize if it would refresh your recollection you may refer to your reports your honor at this point i guess i'm going to object to any statements he's in custody he's in handcuffs miranda clearly applies there's been no exception established your honor he made these statements voluntarily there's been no foundation made to establish that we can lay foundation for that all right well that's my objection all right so let's lay a foundation okay so you stated he was in your vehicle yes and you were transporting him to um the police department yes okay could you tell me what happened when you um were placed uh transporting him while transporting mr bales made several open voluntary statements to me okay and did you ask any questions that could have elicited these no. statements he made them voluntarily yes okay does that satisfy the foundation i guess i'm uh stuck on the word voluntarily where are these statements coming from i'm not sure if i understand that question the back so, seat of the car i assume understood that your honor i apologize i'll ask a better make a better point so he's handcuffed sitting in the back of the car and you're saying he's making voluntary statements I am still lost as to how that's voluntary when Miranda should apply at that point. You want to respond? Your officer, or your honor, the officer stated that he didn't ask any sort of questions that elicited these responses and that he made these statements on his uh, voluntarily, on, on his free will, on free will. Oh, well. I okay. referred my report to get specific statements that he voluntarily openly stated. If it would refresh your recollection, yes. on uh, Mr. Bales stated uh, that inside the plastic baggies contained meth. He forgot he had placed the items on his vehicle. He stated he uses meth occasionally, and he stated he only has $400 to his name and doesn't know how he'll pay for the check. Okay, and then um, let's go back to the items that you recovered and you placed them in evidence. Um, do you know the evidence bag number associated in the weight? Yes, I do. Uh, what are they? May I refer to my report? Get specific. If it would refresh your recollection, you may refer to your report. Evidence bag number Adam 00360453330. Original weight 2.1 grams. Weight in evidence bag 6 grams. Okay. I have nothing further. Thank you. Cross. Good afternoon, officer. I'm going to ask you just a few questions. If you don't understand a question, uh, let me know and I'll rephrase. Is that fair? Yes. So, you go to the Mr. Bales' address. Yes. And you approach this Ford Edge. No. At some point, you approach the Ford Edge. Some point, yes. And you said the hood was open. Yes. There was a jump pack on the battery. I believe so, yes. You said some doors were open. Yes. You don't know how long, how that car got there, correct? No. You don't know how long it's been sitting there? No. You don't know who else had been on the property? No. You don't know if somebody had been there right before you got there? No. Mr. Bales didn't have anything in his pockets, correct? He may have had something in his pockets. He didn't have any, well, I'll ask a better question. He didn't have any contraband in his pockets, correct? No. And the drugs you recovered, you said, um, where did you where did you place them when you recovered them? In evidence bags. And where did those, where did those evidence bags go next? In the back of my patrol unit. 
Okay. And from there, where did you bring them? To the police department. And from there? Into evidence locker. And did you fill out um, the paper, a paperwork related to the evidence locker? Yes. And you performed no other actions on this case, correct? Reference to narcotics? Correct. No. No, you did not perform any other? No, I did not. Um, and Mr. Bales is in the back of your scout car when you're transporting him to um, this police department, correct? Yes. And he was in handcuffs? Yes. Handcuffed behind his back? Yes. And you, your testimony is that you did not say anything to him? Not that I didn't say anything to him. I did not ask him any specific questions reference the charge of paraphernalia and narcotics. What did you ask him? Well, he was asking me questions about where we're going or without reviewing the video, I can't give specific questions, but questions that I can absolutely answer with them to him without reading him Miranda, because I didn't ask him any questions specifically regarding the charge. Understood. I don't believe I have anything else. Redirect. I just have one question, Your Honor. Go ahead. So the- Never say that, by the way, because <laughs> so many times you're going to be wrong. So just say yes, redirect. Okay, thank you. So the the items that you recovered and placed in the evidence uh, bags, do you remember the evidence locker number? May I refer to my report? If it would refresh your recollection. Your Honor, may I approach? See, there's another question. Okay. Evidence You're locker right. number five. Nothing further. Thank you. Nothing else. Anything else from the defense or prosecution? Nothing from people. People rest. Any witnesses for defense? No witnesses for defense. Your Honor, I would just note, um, just for the record, that I understand uh, for probable cause, not the biggest issue, but we do not have that in our video um, where these statements were allegedly made. So I would like the court to know that, and I'm requesting that people provide that. We can provide that information, and if if it does exist. Fair enough. And if the defense has no witnesses, people move for a bind over on all charges and reserve argument for rebuttal. Thank you. Defense would object to the bind over without argument on the one charge that Mr. Bales is charged with. Thank you. Your Honor, it's a question of fact for the trier of fact. So first of all, I've got to tell you, good job, because I've been trying to teach him to say a reserve argument. So somehow he taught you that without doing it himself. So he's not listening right now. So as long as, long as you're hearing me, thank you. Uh, it is a probable cause uh, hearing and it is a issue for the trier of fact. I will bind over. Mr. Bales, your AOI date is gonna be two weeks from today at 9 a.m. That's the 31st. We'll get you a notice in just a few minutes. No, no, I keep forgetting the old way. Would, we're saving paper now. Um, I've got a cash bond. I'm assuming bond will be continued. Any argument? Argument, Your Honor. Nothing Anything else? Nothing from defense. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Be safe. Be well. Sleep sweet and much love. <laughs>